Where are those naughty girls? It's time to change their nappies and their hiding. How very naughty of them. We're only here, Mum. We were only in the garden. I've been looking for you, as it's time to change your nappies. Come on. Why are we still in nappies at our ages? Because you're naughty and refuse to be potty trained. So, come and change your nappies. Now. This was the best thing we ever thought of, Amy. I agree with you there, Bridget. Who wants to waste six and a half hours learning a bunch of useless facts we aren't going to use later on in life? Nine o'clock to 15.30 is way too long. Actually, our class hours are 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m., remember? Those dumbasses think they can imprison us for that long? Not bloody likely. If it isn't my naughty nieces bunking off school, Amy and Bridget Sanders, why aren't you at school? We can't be bothered to sit and absorb useless information. It's not for us. School is for losers. That is no excuse. Nor is it the attitude for a nine-year-old and a ten-year-old. You are very naughty girls. We're not very and naughty. We're Amy and Bridget. Trust you to forget your own nieces' names. Naughty girls don't get laughs. And you two are being very naughty. I have to see it to believe it. Amy and Bridget, why aren't you in school? You better have a damn good reason. We got suspended for swearing in class. Yeah, that's what happened. Don't you stand there and fib to your mother like that. Naughty. I have had enough of you two being naughty all the time. You act like a pair of spoiled brats. Why can't you behave? We are behaving. In a very naughty way. Bunking off school and lying to me and your yarn about being suspended. You are coming home, and when we get in, you are both going to bed. You have been really naughty. Another day is upon us. Actually it's another night. But who cares? Not us. We don't go to bed when told. We go whenever we choose. No you definitely do not. You go to bed when I tell you. You are very naughty girls. Is that right? Is it so? Oh you two are so naughty. How dare you speak to me like that. I'm your mother and that is very rude and disrespectful. Anyway. It's bedtime. So come on, off to bed. And don't disobey me. We're not going to bed. So there. Don't think I can't hear you girls. Because I can, and you are both being very naughty. But we're not though. Yes you are. It's bedtime, and you're refusing to go up to bed. That's very naughty of you. But we're not tired. Tired or not. You're nine and ten years old, and that's too young to decide when to go to bed. That privilege comes when you're older. So stop being naughty, and do as you're told. You'll be grounded if you don't. Bed. Now. We're not going to bed. Yes you are. And you are going now. I am taking you naughty girls up and putting you there. And you are both grounded for your naughty behavior tonight. Two weeks should be enough. Oh yes. And you are having nappies on as well. Why can't my daughters behave? So, Auntie Mandy's babysitting us while Mum's out. That's right, girls. And if you're naughty, 
There will be big trouble. Is that clear? Yes, Auntie Mandy. That's good, girls. What's next? Amy, I understand your mum put a nappy on you before she went out. Oh yeah, she did. What was that for? It was for being naughty at wake-up time. I peed on the bed, as she was changing me. No, it wasn't. It was for wetting yourself on the sofa. Fibber. Okay, Bridget. Don't start being naughty. I need to change Amy's nappy. I'll be right back. I know I'll end up in nappies too if I don't use the toilet. There you go, Amy. All changed. Where's Bridget? I'm right here, Auntie Mandy. I just popped off to the toilet. I don't want nappies on today. I think you'd better wear them anyway. Come on, Bridget. It's time for your nappy. Looks like you're going to have them on. Amy, I'll be back in a minute. I'm just going to put a nappy on Bridget. Girls, can you join me in here please? What's the matter, Mum? Are we in trouble or something? No girls. You're not in trouble. You haven't been naughty in two weeks. I just need to talk to you. What's it regarding? Nappies. Us still being in nappies or just nappies in general? Both. You should have been potty trained as toddlers. You're now eight and nine and still have to wear nappies part time. That's the you still being in nappies side of it. Okay, what's the general side? Well, even though we shouldn't, your aunt and I still put them on you during the day. We want to stop, but we can't if you two are putting them on each other. Putting nappies on each other? We don't do that. Yes we do. Every day, at around 5.30 in the afternoon. You need to stop doing that. Otherwise your aunt and I won't be able to stop it either. Yes, mum. The only time you should each be wearing a nappy is bedtime. We understand, Mum. No more nappies during the day. I know you'll listen, Amy. Bridget, I know you're likely to be naughty and put a nappy on your sister yard for this. If you do, you'll be grounded. Don't worry, Mum. I won't let her anywhere near me with a nappy. If she tries to put one on me, I'll scream. During the day only. At bedtime there's no point of resisting. As that would be very naughty of you. Okay. Amy. Let's go and put your nappy on. Come on. I don't think so, Bridget. You should listen to Mum. You're naughty for not doing so, Bridget. You are very naughty for ignoring my warning. You are grounded for three weeks. Also, just for trying to put a nappy on your sister, you can have your nappy on and go to bed this instant. Well done, Amy. You're a good girl. I'm all up and ready for my day. Bridget, I... Have you messed yourself? It smells like you have. No. Of course not. Bridget, if you need the toilet you should just go, or you'll end up in nappies. I don't need the toilet. It's too late now, as you've gone and done one in your knickers. You need nappies on. What is the wretched smell? Has one of you messed herself? Whoever it is will be put into nappies. It's Bridget, Mum. She's messed herself, and needs to be in nappies. As for you, Bridget. Come with me, and I'll clean you up, and then you are having a nappy on. Naughty girl. There. All nice and clean. I will change you when you need it. Why doesn't Amy have to wear nappies? Because, unlike you, she uses the toilet when she needs to. I think you still need them on during the day as well.
I hope Bridget's doing all right out there alone. This is a huge step forward I've allowed her to take. It doesn't matter what you think. It's never okay to hit a girl, let alone trying to do just that. Don't say it's okay then. I never said it was okay, you stupid idiot. Get out of here, or... Bridget. What's this all about? That boy outside was hitting me around. I don't blame you for being angry, in that case. Bring the naughty boy in here. He deserves our proper telling off. The naughty boy who hit Bridget has gone home, cat. I shall go and complain to his parents then. You should. I'll mind the girls. Bridget. Please. I'm sorry, Amy. It's just that. I hate being angry. Yes, but, sweetheart, you had a good reason for it in the first place. And had the stupid twit not hit you in the first place, none of this would have happened. What if this affects my good behavior? It won't if you control yourself. Catherine is out with Bridget, which leaves me here with Amy. Where is she? I'm right here, Auntie Mandy. What are we going to be doing? Well, for a start you won't be needing any knickers, or toilet breaks. No knickers or toilet breaks? Why on earth not? Because you're going to be in nappies. You're putting nappies on me? Yes, Amy. I'm putting nappies on you. I'll change you whenever you need it. But I'm nine years old. I don't need nappies. Yes you do, and you're having them on. Don't be naughty. It's time to put your nappy on. Now. All I said was couldn't it wait for my programs to finish. But you want to take over straight away. As usual, you want to hog the TV, after having been staring at it all morning. It's my turn. You have to wait. But that's not fair. I want to watch my programs. You selfish little brat. Little? I'm a year older than you. That makes me the big sister, and I say you have to wait, so get lost. Stop this now. The pair of you. But you're not of liberty to tell me what to do. I have said. Stop it, right now. You naughty girls. Now I'm in trouble. Thanks, Amy. Amy and Bridget Sanders. You are both in trouble. How dare you squabble over whose turn it is to watch the TV. That's very naughty. Bridget started it. No, Amy started it. I don't care who started this petty squabble. All I could hear was you two squabbling over the TV. And now I'm in here trying to settle it. You squabble over who started it. You are so naughty. It's all Bridget's fault. She interrupted me. It's all Amy's fault. She instigated it. I have had enough of you two squabbling like a couple of toddlers, and I'm not tolerating it. You are grounded for three weeks. The pair of you. You have no authority over us. Excuse me, Bridget, but I do have authority over you and Amy. I share custody with your mother. Also, I'm your aunt, and the only adult in the house. So... Whatever, Bridget. Be quiet, Amy. Both of you go to your rooms, right now. I'll be there to put you to bed in a few minutes. Once you're in nappies, that is. Naughty babies. Odd. I thought today was the start of term. Where is everybody? Isn't it obvious? They're in class, and we're over two hours late. You are indeed. 
and there had better be a good explanation. We overslept. And didn't realize the time until it was too late. No excuses. You naughty girls. Detention for the pair of you. Detention? But that's not fair. It is so fair. What's not fair is you turn up late with a poor excuse. This is unfair to your teachers and classmates. Amy, you're supposed to be a year five now. And you, Bridget, are supposed to be a year four. This is highly inappropriate behavior for eight and nine year old girls. Can we go to class now? You better, and apologize to everyone in your classes for your tardiness. It is a lovely time I had today, and... Amy, come on. It's time for your bath. My bath? That's right. Bridget's already squeaky clean, and tucked up in bed. So, it's a bath for you. I don't want a bath. Perhaps you need to wear a nappy tonight. A nappy? Yes, Amy. A nappy. Your mum has taken care of your sister, and I'm taking care of you. You're going to be in a nappy tonight. Why do I need a nappy on? You are going into a nappy because you're being very naughty about having your bath. So, after I've got you washed and dried, it's into a nappy, and then bed for you. I'm not having nappies on. Yes you are. And just for that, you are staying in nappies for a week. Naughty girl. And so, because she was naughty at her bath time, Amy has been put in nappies. Nappies? Yes, nappies. For what duration? A week. What a morning and a half. Amy, that is a very offensive smell. You need to change your nappy. Off you go and get changed. Change my nappy? But I don't need to. All right, girls. What's the trouble? Mum, you need to change Amy's nappy. She's done a stinky one. Don't worry. I'll change her now. As for you, Amy, come with me, as it's time to change your nappy. That's that sorted. Bridget. Where's your mum? She's upstairs changing Amy's nappy. Okay. What is it? I think you need to put a nappy on. No thanks. Now Bridget, don't be naughty. You're going in nappies. Come with me, and I will put you a nappy on, now. There you go. That nappy stays on until you need changing. Do not take it off or try to change yourself. So it appears that both my daughters have nappies on. We now have two nappies to change. Why did Auntie Mandy decide you had to wear nappies anyway? I assume it's because you have to wear them at the moment. Bingo. Bridget, you're in nappies because Amy needs company. That's a good one. It appears as though somebody needs a nappy change. Bridget, it's time to change your nappy. Done. Both of you, come on. It's time to change your n This is the perfect day for relaxing. Oh Bridget, guess who's naughty? I don't know Amy. Who's naughty? Is it you? No, Bridget. You're the one who's naughty. Not me. Why am I naughty? You're naughty because you didn't tidy your room like you promised you would. Naughty Bridget, naughty naughty Bridget. 
you're a very naughty Bridget indeed. Amy, stop antagonizing me. Naughty Amy. Naughty 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 Amy. You're a very naughty Amy indeed. Amy and Bridget Sanders. Stop this behavior at once. Can't you go just one day without being at each other's throats and antagonizing one another? You are very naughty girls. Bridget leaves her room in a mess and I get into trouble. Unfair. You started antagonizing me. And you started antagonizing me back. That's enough. Both of you. You're as bad as each other. We are tired of hearing you two argue. Stop it this instant. The pair of you. Naughty girls. Naughty Bridget. Naughty 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 Bridget. Very naughty Bridget indeed. That's it. Amy, go to your room this instant. Why? Because, as of this moment you missy, are grounded. How dare you continue to antagonize your sister after being told to stop. You're a very naughty girl. Now you Bridget, will be grounded if you haven't tidied your room. Don't you worry. I have. Don't you lie to us, young lady. We know you haven't lifted a finger as far as your room's concerned. You're a naughty girl, aren't you? No. I'm not a naughty girl. Yes you are. You're a very naughty girl. You also are grounded. For you arguing with your sister and lying to us about your room being tidy. Get up there and sort it at once. Naughty girl. Amy Amy Amy. Baby Amy. Change baby Amy's nappy. Bridget, if you know what's good for you, you will shut your stupid mouth. But you're wearing a nappy aren't you? Baby Amy. Shut up Bridget. It's your fault I'm wearing a nappy. I'm not the one who messed herself. No, but you are the naughty one who caused me to mess myself and end up in nappies again. You prevented me from going to the toilet. You naughty girls are always arguing over something. Stop it at once. We are tired of defusing these situations all the time. Baby Amy needs a nappy change. Shut up. I don't need to change my nappy. You stupid idiot. It's all your fault. Amy, that is a disgusting attitude. You're in nappies for messing yourself. That's entirely your fault for being so lazy. If you need to be changed, you better come and change your nappy. Bridget blocked the bathroom door stopping me from getting to the toilet, and my nappy does not need changing. Yes she does. Baby Amy needs her nappy changing, so give her a nappy change. Alright, that's enough. I'll change Amy's nappy. As for you, Bridget, teasing Amy for being in nappies is very naughty. I'm going to have to put nappies on you for this. Oh no, I'm not having a nappy on. Bridget Sanders, you are having a nappy on. You're a naughty girl for teasing your sister the way you did. So come on, your nappy goes on. Now. I think Bridget and I could benefit from separate activities, as we're always naughty when together. And I'm very proud of you for taking that action, Amy. Thanks, Mum. I know Bridget hates being alone, as it keeps her from annoying anyone. Oh sweetheart. Please don't think about that. Neither of you is truly alone. I'm here with you, and your Yanti Mandy is out with Bridget. That is of course very true, Mum. I feel as though I need to admit to something. What is it you want to get off your chest, darling? I might act like I hate Bridget, but I don't. I love her very much, and... I'm sorry to interrupt, but if I may get you to shift over, first of all. I know you love your sister, and you'd do anything for her. Secondly, we didn't believe for one second that just because you two are usually at each other's throats it meant you didn't love each other. That would be ridiculous. It actually brings us closer. 
It does, and you are usually well behaved until Bridget sets you off. I'm sorry, but I'm confused. If you knew Bridget being naughty usually sets me off with naughtiness, then how come you never punish her for getting on my nerves? Because of her way of acting innocent working effectively on us. Mum, you and Auntie Mandy are a couple of steaming twits. How could you let that fool you into letting her off? Oh you cheaty little monkey. Come here. I love you, Mum. I love you too, sweetheart. We're home. Oh bless. This is so beautiful. Hello, Mandy. Bridget. How was your day out? It was really good. We really enjoyed our time together. And we think Amy deserves our thanks for coming up with the clever idea of each child going off with one of us to spend one-to-one -one time. I'm happy to have been a help. Did Bridget make any strange confessions, getting one from you, in turn? You bet she did. She admitted how her constant naughtiness annoying Amy, leading her to being naughty to didn't mean she doesn't love her. I don't think we need to guess what she got from you. Let's me guess. You and Amy had the same conversation. We did indeed. Shortly before you two got in. So Amy, how did you react when Mum admitted to my innocent act blinding her and Auntie Mandy to my naughty behavior setting you off to follow suit? I marveled at what great twits they were to let themselves be fooled like that. You two are so alike in your thoughts. Bridget was exactly the same. I don't blame them for thinking that. Neither do I we deserve it. Amy. Wanna go and play? I'd love to. Nothing naughty, mind you. Don't worry. We're just going to go upstairs and play some games. Off you two go and enjoy each other's company. We'll call you when dinner is ready. What good little girls I have. Mum and Auntie Mandy expect us to be naughty sometimes, so it's my turn to be naughty today. And you're doing just that, Amy. Standing on the sofa is naughty. Are you going to get down, or do I need to tell on you? I think I'll just stay up here. Okay, if you want it that way. I'll have to get Mum in here, Mum. Amy's being naughty. Is she? What she? Oh, I see. You get down from there this instant. You naughty girl. I think I'll just stay up here. No you definitely won't. You are going to do as you're told and get down from there. You'll be grounded if you don't. I don't want to get down. In that case, you are grounded. How dare you stand on the sofa and disobey me when I tell you to get down. You're a very naughty girl. Get off the table. Naughty girl. Don't just stand there naughty. Go to your room. Now. No. Amy, you are being very naughty, and I'm not tolerating it. Get to your room this instant. I'm not being naughty. Excuse me, Amy. You are being very naughty. How dare you behave this way? Shut up. That's it. If you're going to be naughty all day, then it's off to bed for you. Now. I'm not going to bed. Amy Sanders. You are going straight to bed. I won't have you being naughty anymore. Mum, are you in? We need to see you. Girls, your mum has had to pop out and run a few errands. Whatever it is you have to tell her, you can tell me. What is it? Just that we love her. Very much. All right, you cheeky girls. What have you done this time? What have we done? Why nothing at all. Amy and Bridget Sanders. We know very well that when you suck up like this, it means you've done something naughty. So come on. Be honest. We are being honest. 
100% honest indeed. Girls, you shouldn't tell lies. It's naughty, and you know that. Tell me the truth. What is that crinkling noise? Amy, you had better not have an appy on. No, Auntie Mandy. I haven't. I don't believe you. Bridget, I hope you're not wearing one too. No, Auntie Mandy. Ah, uh -huh. you do have an appy on. Okay, so we have nappies on. So what? You girls have been putting nappies on each other again, haven't you? Yeah, so? No, it's not so. You girls are very naughty for putting nappies on each other. We will not spend the day changing you. Go and take those nappies off at once. No. We are keeping our nappies on, and that's that. Oh, you naughty girls. If you want to wear nappies, fine. But you're changing one another. That's fine. I need to change Amy's nappy anyway. And I need to change Bridget's. I'll be telling your mother about this. You're grounded. The pair of you. Hey Bridget. Hi, Amy. Are you okay? Yes thank you, Bridget. I'm thinking about putting nappies on you today. You better not be, because putting nappies on me for no good reason is naughty, and you'd be in trouble with mum and auntie Mandy. Now Bridget, I'm your big sister, and if I say you have to wear nappies, you have to wear them. It'll be naughty of you to object. So come on, your nappy awaits. It's very quiet around here. Almost done now, Bridget. Just this last tape to go. And done. This nappy stays on until you need changing. Nappy. Oh that naughty girl has put a nappy on her sister, again. I'll deal with this. Mum. Amy just put a nappy on me. I know. I overheard her saying about it. I'll sort her out. Amy's my little sister, so I put her in nappies. That's no excuse. Putting nappies on her for being your little sister. Pathetic. I messed myself. Looks like I need to change my baby sister's nappy. No you don't. I'll sort her you out, and then I'll be giving you a taste of your own medicine. Mum thinks she can tell me what to do. I'll show her. Amy, I hope you're not still being naughty. If you are, I will ground you for two weeks. Don't you dare. Shut up, woman. I'm not taking your stupid idiotic crap anymore. From now on, I'll do what I want. That's it. How dare you stand on the table and then speak to me in such a disgraceful manner. That's very naughty, and I will not tolerate it. Get down and go upstairs to your room. Now. As of now, you're grounded for two weeks. How dare you? I believe I'll just stay right where I am. No, you most certainly won't. You will do as you're told. Get off the table and go to your room right now. No fucking way. I suggest you change that attitude at once, young lady. How dare you say such an naughty word? Naughty girl. Yeah, whatever. Shut your big mouth. Amy, that is enough. Change the attitude right now. Otherwise I will give you the punishment that best fits the way you're behaving. And which punishment is that? Well, you're acting like a baby, and if you don't stop it and act your age, you will be treated like one. Meaning what exactly? Nappies. That's what. Oh no. I'm not wearing nappies again. Put them on Bridget or someone else, but not me. I will put a nappy on you if one more sulky word leaves your mouth. You're acting like a baby. No way, lady. Right. That's it. It's nappies for you until further notice. Come on, let's go and put a nappy on you, right now. Great. Now we'll have to change Amy's nappies until further notice.
No disrespect meant sir, but these are my daughters, and I shall treat them in whichever way I see fit for their behavior, or other. I see, so you even put nappies on them? I can't see how this is any of your business. He was a nosy parker. He certainly was. How mum decides we should be treated is her business, and her business only. Aren't you two my sweet little babies? Yes we are. I think it's time I change your bums now, girls. They say I need to buckle down and pay more attention in class. Maybe I shouldn't be in year 5, if that's how they feel. Is my sister having doubts about whether or not she belongs in year 5? Yes, Bridget. I am. I know in a few short months I won't be anymore, unless they hold me back. And why would they do that? You paid the best attention you could, and that should be good enough for them. I don't think it is though. Considering how it's year 5, and they expect better from a group of 9 and 10 year olds. This is something you need advice from Mum or Auntie Mandy about. And it's advice your mother, that's me, should be giving you. So, Amy, what's got you into this pickle? Apparently, I'm faced with being held back a year if I don't pay more attention. Their words, not mine. Now, I doubt if I should even be in year 5 at all. Bridget, could you leave me alone with Amy, please? Of course, Mum. All right, darling, if I can get you to scoot now. Tell me exactly what happened today that's made you even doubt yourself. Well, Mrs. Hamilton apparently caught me doodling during a maths class. When she asked me why I wasn't paying attention, I just muttered that I couldn't help finding it boring. The next thing I knew, I was in the headmaster's office being told if I don't pay more attention, they're going to hold me back. I see. And because of this, you don't think you should be in year five at all? Yes, Mum. Amy, sweetheart. I understand and sympathize with your situation. The same thing happened to both me and your auntie Mandy when we were your age. What happened? Well, we each had to repeat year five twice before finally moving on to year six. So, when your auntie first made it to year five, I was repeating it for the second time. So it doesn't matter if I have to repeat a year? No, darling. In fact I think it'll help you to be held back. Even if it does happen to you more than once. If you think being held back, then I shall take it lightly. After all, with my sister also joining year 5 next autumn, I can help her. That's the way to look at it. Come here. I love you, Mum. I love you too, my sweet little baby girl. I'm telling you, Bridget. None of what you heard is true. A man from the future? Come on, get real. How can a man come from the future? It hasn't happened yet. Amy, why are you being so skeptical? This man came from the year 3387 in his time machine, which he willingly showed the public. Time machine? 3387. What a load of rubbish. Time machines such as the one you describe are only real in fiction and not in real life. The 34th century hasn't happened yet, and nor will it for another 1,400 years. I promise you now. It's a hoax, and you were foolish enough to believe it. Okay, I'll make a deal with you. If this man is from the 34th century and is able to prove it, you have to wear nappies for a week. Right. And if he isn't able to prove it, you have to wear nappies for a fortnight? Right. You're on. I hope you look forward to getting your nappers changed for a week. Poor Bridget's going to wish she'd never made this deal, as I is she. Who's going to be getting her nappies changed for a fortnight? The fool. So, Amy, 
You made an agreement with Bridget about proving a certain man coming from a certain date in the future in a certain time machine? Yes, Mum. And it involves nappies. It involves nappies, does it? Yes, Auntie Mandy. We agreed that. If she could get proof the man is from the future, I have to wear nappies for a week. And if she can't? Then it'll be she who has to wear nappies, but for two weeks instead of one. Why two weeks? Because it'll be one week for not being able to provide any proof, and another week for being silly about it in the first place. In that case, to make it fair, if she can get proof, you should wear nappies for two weeks. One week for not believing her, and one week for calling her silly. I'm back. And I assume you have proof. If not, then it's two weeks in nappies for you, as we agreed. I was unable to obtain any, as he's not allowed to show any pictures from his time. Aha. This proves my point. Guess who's having nappies on? Oh yeah. I now have to endure two weeks in nappies. I'm afraid so. You are to be getting your nappies changed for the next two weeks. So, it's time to put your nappy on, Missy. Now, come on, Bridges. Nappy for you. Now. Congratulations, Amy. Your sister is now in nappies for two weeks. You'll be changing her nappies as well. Amy. Yes, Mum. I'm just going to change Bridget's nappy, as that strange agreement between you girls is still active. Okay, Mum. Amy, there's a nasty smell coming from this room. You haven't messed yourself, have you? It'll be nappies on if you have. No. Get down here, naughty girl. Yes, you have. And what's more? You lied to me about it as well. That's very naughty. I want nappies on you for four weeks. But. No buts. Let's go and put a nappy on you, right now. Naughty girl. You get treated how you act. So, Amy ends up in nappies for twice the time I did. For acting like a baby and messing herself. What a beautiful day it is today. Too beautiful to do as Mum has told us and remain outside the house, where she can see us. Let's go and see what fun there is at the park. An excellent idea, Amy. We get into trouble all the time, it's no big deal. My thoughts exactly. Then what are we waiting for? Let's make a move. Boy, that was a narrow escape. Getting stopped by that nosy Lana Marsh. We nearly got busted. I suppose she might have gone and ratted us out to mum. If not, someone must have. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. But who would have done that? Me. That's who. You naughty girls are not supposed to be out here. You were supposed to be outside your house. But Grace, we are outside our house. But not where I can see you. How dare you wander away from the front of the house, totally disobeying my instruction. Ooh, we are so scared. So scared we've wet ourselves. And messed ourselves as well. Oh for goodness sake you two. You act like babies, and you're supposed to be nine and ten. Well, I never. If that's what you want, I shall treat you the way you act. You are both coming home, and you are both having nappies on. Those are two of the naughtiest children I've ever encountered. And there will be no naughty behavior of any kind while I'm looking after you, 
Is that understood? Clear, Isabel. What makes you think? Bridget, don't even go there. Girls, I'm warning you both. If either one of you, or both of you are naughty, you will go to bed early, and I'll be reporting it to your mother and aunt. So behave yourselves. Kimberly, you have my word as mum and auntie man you did. I won't be naughty all evening. I'm off to play on my computer. Good girl Amy. Off you go. I'll call you when dinner's ready. Well, Bridget, don't just sit there. What are you going to do? I'm going to the park. I'm sorry Bridget, but I can't let you do that. Why not? Because it's 6.30 in the evening and curfew started for you and Amy the moment I arrived. Feel free to amuse yourself. But don't be naughty. Don't be naughty, eh? Who does she think she is coming in here and telling us what to do? I'll do what I want. Bridget, I suggest you change your attitude. Kimberly has the right to give us orders. She's in charge while Mum and Auntie Mandy are out. Are you going to get down from there? Or do I have to tell Kimberly? You do, and I'll tell everyone that my sister is a grass. And then we'll see how much respect you have. Amy, sweetheart. I think you'd better let me handle this. Yes, Kimberly. As for you, Bridget Sanders. You are being very naughty tonight, and I am not putting up with it. I am taking you upstairs and putting you to bed. Well, I'm not going to bed, so suck it. Yes, you are. And just for that suggestive comment, you are having a nappy on. How dare you be so naughty? and obscenely minded. Don't think you've escaped your mother and aunt finding out about this because you haven't. I love being quiet when I want to be. I hope Bridget heeded Mum's warning to leave me alone. I would leave you alone, Amy. But I don't know how much you want. You know damn well that's not what I meant. Just go away and leave me alone, you naughty girl. I'd rather not. Bridget, I don't want you pestering me today. If you don't push off, right now, I will give Mum a shout. So bug. So, Bridget. You thought it would be a good idea to ignore my warning and annoy your sister, did you? You're a naughty little girl. No I'm not. Excuse me, Missy, but annoying me after being warned not to is very naughty of you. Yes, young lady. You were very naughty to annoy me after I warned you not to. I can't believe you disobeyed me, again. You're grounded for two weeks. But mum. No bots, young lady. You're grounded, end of story. Now go to your room. Naughty girl. Amy. Yes, Bridget. I got this idea for a new game we could play. Want to give it a go? Depends what type of game it is. All we do is drop swear bombs on whoever walks past. Bridget, I think that's a really bad idea. Swearing at whoever passes the house. No thanks. I've got better things to do than swear at people for the fun of it. And I don't think you should either. I'm off to play on my PS4. Why don't you go and play on your Wii U? My what are you? What's the fun in that? How very... Amy can be sometimes. Bridget Sanders. You need to watch your language. Language. But all I said was how Amy can be very... Sometimes. And how dare you drop such a naughty word on your sister. You are unbelievable. But Nikita... Isn't a dirty word. It obviously is, otherwise you wouldn't be getting censored every time you say it. So watch your language. Why are they censoring a perfectly ordinary word every time I say it? 
That's just so. Stop using such disgusting language. Bridget Sanders. You are a very naughty girl. You do not use such language. Not you too, Kate. Don't you see how very... <coughs> this is? Young lady, you need to wash your mouth out with soap. That is just filthy. How dare you? What's going on out here? You need to punish your daughter, Catherine. She's swearing all the time. Bridget Sanders. I do hope this isn't true. Are you swearing all the time? No. It's not true. Excuse me, young lady. I am your mother, and you are very naughty to call me by my given name. How dare you? I'm sorry, but this is my opinion, but all these sensor noises are very... That's enough. You have sworn enough for one day. On top of calling me by my given name. You get inside the house, right now. You're grounded. <coughs> Naughty girl. Mum and Auntie Mandy asked us to wait for them in the lounge, but they're not showing up. They also told us to wait patiently for them, and that's what we're going to do. It would be rude and naughty to disobey them. I'm not entirely sure how the girls are going to take the news, Mandy. Trust me, Kat. They'll take it well. They're big girls now. Here they come. Amy, Bridget. Your Auntie Mandy has something to tell you. What is it, Auntie Mandy? We are all ears. I'm leaving you all. It appears as though you don't need me here anymore, so I'm relocating. You're moving away? Yes, just to another part of England. Further up north. Well, Auntie Mandy this is a bit of a shock. But we shall of course support your decision to move up north. 100%. Now you two, I just want to make two things quite clear. One. This won't be the last we see of your Auntie Mandy. We'll still see her sometimes. And two, just because she won't be here full time anymore, this doesn't mean you can go back to being naughty all the time. We understand. One more thing girls. I will be phoning every night to check in on you all. So you two had best be on your best behavior. I will be very cross if I hear either one, or both of you being naughty over the phone. Is that clear? Crystal clear. You don't have to tell us twice. Okay, girls. Your Auntie Mandy has already packed and prepared for her journey. All she needs is a hug goodbye from her nieces. Goodbye, girls. Be good now, won't you? Yes, Auntie Mandy. We love you. I love you too, my precious little angels. Have a safe journey. I will. Thank you. Okay, girls. It's nearly dinner time. Go and wash your hands, and sit up at the table please. Bye, Kat. I love you so much. I love you too, Mandy. Thanks for everything you've done for us. We're very grateful. Have a very safe journey, and don't talk to strangers. I will, and I won't. I love you all. We love you too. It's going to be a big adjustment for you all of us. I do miss Auntie Mandy, but I'm doing fine. See you Amy. Hold on a minute there, Bridget. If you're thinking about telling tales, you can forget it. Why? Because telling tales is very cruel if you're doing it for no reason. Not forgetting to mention how naughty you are to think about committing such a babyish act. You're going to end up in nappies if you're not careful. I will put nappies on whoever tells naughty tales on anyone.
Don't any of you two do that. Aim is trying to spoil my fun. Bridget Sanders, that's very naughty. How dare you tell tales on your sister? You should have listened to me, you horrible little telltale tit. As for you, Bridget, you are grounded for two weeks. Before you tell another naughty tale, it's time to put a nappy on you. Now. And then you're going to bed. I will be telling your yanty about this tonight. Where is everyone when you need guidance? Are my ears deceiving me, or did my baby sister say she needs guidance? You heard me correctly, Amy. I need guidance. You couldn't advise me could you? Well first, I must ask what you need advice about. I need advice on how to solve a mystery about the school. I thought that might be the case. The school year is nearly over, and you want to go sneaking into the out-of-bounds rooms and cupboards. I think you'd better sit down. So, what would you advise me on? I advise you not to break into the rooms and cupboards that are out of bounds to students because they conceal all matter of dark artifacts and things that if unleashed will pose a dangerous threat to the school, its students and its staff, and as you know full well, instant expulsion awaits any student who dares to interfere. Mum will go berserk if you got expelled for endangering the school. But Amy... No buts about it, Bridget. Do not under any circumstances interfere with anything in those rooms or cupboards. You're naughty for even considering it. I heard everything you said, Bridget. Aim is quite right to warn you against meddling in danger. You're very naughty to think about it. Heed your sister's words. Are you one of the dangers? Bridget, you need to watch your mouth. Fancy speaking to mum like that. I'll give you one of the dangers, Missy. How dare you speak to me like that, you naughty girl. You are grounded for four weeks. Get upstairs and get straight into bed. The cheek of the girl. What a brilliant day this is. Perfect for a day of fun. Mandy, I will remind you that Mum is inspecting our rooms. And she won't be happy to find yours in a mess. I'll just lie my way out of it. Mandy, I strongly advise you against lying your way out this, because you will get grounded for a week Kali. So don't you dare. So what? Catherine, I'm very pleased with the tidiness of your room. Off you go and play with your friends. Thanks, Mum. See you at dinner. See you at dinner, darling. What about me, Mum? You are going to march right up to your room and tidy up, right now, young lady. Mum, my room is tidy, so I don't know what you're talking about. No it isn't, it's very messy, and you're the naughty girl who hasn't tidied up. You're grounded for three weeks. One week for lying to me about the state of your room and another two for leaving it in such a mess in the first place, and not lifting so much as a finger to tidy up. Go and tidy your room. Now, you naughty girl. I had better be getting to school now. The tardy bell is due to go at any moment. Why does Mandy always wait until last minute to leave for school? If she carries on this way, she's going to get expelled for absenteeism. Now, Catherine, don't assume the worst outcome. Anyway, don't you have a lecture at college in ten minutes? Not today. 
It's my day off, remember? Of course it is. Tuesday is the day off for students on the entry level 1 course. But I do need to be out with my boyfriend today. You'd better get out there to meet Peter. Say hi from me. I will. Catherine can be so forgetful sometimes. Amy, I thought it would be a good idea if we took our nappies off. No, Bridget, it wouldn't. We can't just take our nappies off. Mummy will go potty. Come on, Amy. Don't be so boring. Remember, Bridget, we refuse to be potty trained, and as a result of that, we still need our nappies on. So no, we are not going to do as you suggest. But with three and four, we shouldn't still be in nappies. Well, the fact is, we are. And so will we be until we're potty trained. So, we are keeping our nappies on until we need changing. Come on girls. I need to change your nappies. There you go, girls. All nice and clean. Can we come out of nappies now? How many times, Bridget? No, you girls are staying in nappies until you're potty trained. Which has to happen at some point. I don't want to be potty trained. Nor do I. Then I'm afraid it'll be nappies for the pair of you, until you stop resisting it. Even if it takes another five years? Even if it takes another five years, which knowing you too, it may well take that time, or longer. By the way, Bridget was thinking about taking her nappy off before you came to change our nappies. Oh was she now? In that case, Bridget. I am going to take you upstairs, change your nappy and put you to bed. That was very naughty of you. I'll go and play now. You can play girls, but don't go too far. Best to stick to rooms inside the house. Stick to rooms inside the house? What are we? Prisoners? I know. Surely it won't hurt to play in the garden. My thoughts exactly. We need the fresh air. I agree, but Mom won't be happy we've disobeyed her. Okay girls, it's time to, that's odd. They're not here. They must be in the study, girls. Nope, they're not here yet either. Must be in the TV room. This is getting silly. Where are they? Girls, this isn't funny. It's very naughty. Come out wherever you are. Where are those naughty girls? It's time to change their nappies and their hiding. How very naughty of them. Hello? Anybody home? Cat? Amy? Bridget? Somebody call? I did, silly. Mandy, my darling. This is our lovely surprise. Hi Cat. I was just in the neighborhood, and thought I'd pop in and see how you're all doing. We are doing very well thank you. I'll get the girls down here now. Amy. Bridget. There's someone here to see you. Hello, girls. Auntie Mandy. This is a very lovely surprise. Well you two, don't just stand there gawking. Get your naughty bottoms into my arms. We've missed you so much. I've missed you too, my precious nieces. We've all missed you, Mandy. 
but we're proud of you all the same. And I'm very proud of all of you too. You've done very well indeed. Thanks, Auntie Mandy. Not at all. One more hug, and then I have to go. Bye, Mandy. It was great seeing you again. And you three. All of you. Okay, you two. Off you go and continue playing. I'll call you when dinner's ready. Okay, Mum. And leave those nappies alone. Let's go, Bridget. Let's indeed. It's nappies for us. Well, it's nappies for you. Naughty. Disobeying Mum like that. It's got to be in here somewhere. Where is it then? Bridget Sanders. What do you think you're doing? Sit up. I was looking for the computer. In that case, you're a very naughty girl. Sneaking in here and looking for my computer. I have locked it away. What? You, on the other hand, are not allowed in here without my permission. You know that perfectly well, yet you snuck in anyway. I'm going to have to punish you for this. Now get off my desk. But... No arguments about it either. Get to your room, right now, and you are grounded. Naughty girl. We're getting away with staying up past our bedtime. It has been too long since I joined you in some late night fun. And just what are you two doing up? It is 10.35 at night. You were supposed to be in bed. We're not tired. So we decided. Tired or not. Your bedtime is 8.30 in the evening, and you disobeyed me by not staying put. You are very naughty girls. Naughty are we? I thought we were Amy and Bridget. That is a very immature attitude. You girls need to learn to stay in bed after being put there at night. How are you going to make sure we do that? Place guards outside our bedroom doors? We have to get up to use the toilet if we need to in the night. Not anymore. You girls are going to have nappies on at night. No. Yes. So come with me, and I will put nappies on the pair of you, and put you back to bed. Now. Why exactly are we standing out here? This is boring. Bridget, can't you go one day without complaining and being naughty? You're nine years old for goodness sake. Act like it. Amy and Bridget. How are things? Fine thanks, Hugh. How are you, Louise? I'm fantastic thanks. My dad's taking me out to keep me from getting bored while Tyler's asleep. That's right. My aim is looking after him. We won't keep you. Have a good time. Why do we have to? Stop moaning now, Bridget. Mum can't trust you out here on your own because you're naughty and rude to everyone, so she's put me in charge of you. Stay put, or go inside. Hello you two. Hi Lana. Oh, and congratulations on both your engagement and your pregnancy. Thank you, Amy. You're such a dear. Getting married and having a baby at just 20? You dumb bimbo. Bridget Sanders. I will not be spoken to like that. I'll wait for an apology. Bridget, you will say sorry to Lana this instant. She does not deserve that kind of treatment. Oh, and maybe you failed to notice that I, your own sister, am blonde? You will apologize, otherwise I will send you in. You are a very naughty girl. Well, I'm waiting. Well I'm not sorry I said that. Fine. 
Get inside then, go on. I am fed up with babysitting you anyway. Naughty girl, Lana. I am truly very sorry for my naughty sister's behavior and attitude. I hate being cross with her. Oh Amy. I will accept the apology, and you're a very good sister. Bridget's lucky to have you. Hopefully, one day she'll see just how much you love her. For the record, you are going to be a fantastic wife to your husband, and an amazing mother, to your unborn son or daughter. Thank you, Amy. You're a lovely girl. I'll tell it like it is. You're a straight-talking, level-headed and loving girl, Amy, and I'm very proud of you. Come on, in you come. There. That's what you get for acting like a baby. Oh stop crying. You deserve to wear a nappy if this is how you're going to behave. But Amy. No buts. You are supposed to be nine years old, and you are acting like you're nine months old. You'll be treated how you act. I will change your nappy when you need it. I don't deserve this. Yes you do. Amy told me she had to put a nappy on you for having a tantrum. She was quite right to do so. Nine-year-olds don't have tantrums. But... No books. You are staying in nappies until you start acting like a nine-year-old. Excuse me, Mum. I need to change Bridget's nappy. My nine-year-old daughter, in nappies for you acting like a baby, again. What a gorgeous day this is. It certainly is, isn't it? Move it along, you bimbo. Bridget Sanders. I am tired of you calling me a bimbo every time you see me. It's very rude and disrespectful. And you are very naughty for doing so. You're not my mother. No, but I am. What's going on out here? Your daughter's being naughty again. Is she? What's she doing this time? She's being very rude to me, as I pass your house. She called me a bimbo. Don't believe the lying bimbo, Mum. Bridget Sanders. How dare you speak very rudely to Lana. I can't believe you do such a thing. I am grounding you for two weeks. Get inside the house and go straight to your room. You are a very naughty girl. I'm so sorry for Bridget's rudeness, Lana. I will do my best to squeeze it out of her. You could do with an extra pair of hands, Catherine. And I don't mean Amy, as she's only a kid. I mean an extra adult. Maybe you could ask Mandy to come back. Where is she? I need to speak to her. Where? Hi Bridget. Looking for me? Yes, Lana. I was looking for you. Here I am. What was it you wanted? I wanted to apologize for the way I've been behaving towards you recently. Throwing insults at you and all that. Oh sweetie, it's alright. It was very good of you to come and apologize. Let's forget any of that ever happened, and start anew. That's the best idea I've heard in like... ever. Keep it down, my son and daughter are sleeping. Sorry about that. That's okay. I need to get them home now. Lung is a good mother. Oh bless that sister of mine. Look at that would you. Now that is so very cute. Bridget has fallen asleep. Come on, Amy. 
Let's leave your sister to sleep. I agree, Mum. Let's leave her. What's going on? Bridget, you're awake. What do you mean? Awake? Well, you were fast asleep when I came to check on you. No, I wasn't. Please, Bridget, let's not argue. I found you asleep. Sorry, Amy. I didn't know. Go on, go and have your lunch. Mum's made your favorite dish. Yum. I'm coming. I love my sister. It is certainly a very nice day for us to be on our lawn. It is indeed. I'll be right back. Where are you going? To use the toilet, of course. Bridget, have you forgotten that we're in nappies at the moment? Oh, damn. I forgot. But I need to go. Go on then. But. I'll get in trouble. See you in a bit. You are in nappies. If you need to go, just go and I'll change you. Why though? You both acted like spoiled brats in town yesterday. If you're going to behave like babies, I'm going to treat you like them. Anyway, I was just about to change your nappies. Come on, both of you. Hello. Amy? Are you home? Hello. Bridget, are you all right? Mum, have you seen Amy? Yes, I have. Great. Where is she? Is she home? Of course she isn't. She went out just as you came looking for her. Oh. Okay. What's the matter, sweetheart? You look disappointed. It's just... I was hoping to catch her before she went out. Oh, I see. Why, what's wrong? Nothing. Bridget, don't lie to me. You must have wanted to see Amy for a reason. What was it? No reason. Okay, if you want to play it that way. I think a nappy might change your mind. Let's go and put one on you. Now. Ha ha ha. You were naughty weren't you? That's why you're sitting here on the sofa looking sorry for yourself. Amy, just go away and leave me alone. Yes I was naughty, and yes I'm being made to sit here as punishment. If mum catches you, you'll be in trouble too. Dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Naughty Bridget sitting in time out for her bad behavior, and... Very naughty Amy about to be punished too. Punished? Why? Because you missy, are being very naughty, teasing your sister like this. Apologize to her, right now. I was only making a point. I'll give you making a point if you don't do as you're told. Oh, will you now? Yes I will. By grounding you. So apologize to Bridget this instant. Naughty girl. But mum. I'm not arguing with you, Amy. Your behavior today is disgusting, and I am not putting up with it. So apologize to your sister for teasing her, or be grounded. What if I don't want to choose either of them? I thought you had more sense, but clearly you don't. You haven't been naughty like this in over a year. You're grounded, until I see a change in your behavior. Grounded? I don't think so. I happen to know so, Missy. Go to your room, no scratch that. You can bloody well go to bed. Now. Bed? But it's the middle of the day. Amy, stop being naughty and do as you're told. Bed. Now. You are a very naughty girl. I'm not going to bed. Yes you are. If I have to take you up, I will. You are going to bed, and you are going now. Why does the weather have to be so damn miserable? 
I'm fed up with this drab, dark and gloomy weather. It's boring being stuck inside for two weeks in a row. Bridget for goodness sake. Will you just quit moaning about the weather and do something constructive? Why should I? Because moaning about it isn't going to make it clear up. Besides, you've been at it for two weeks and it's boring listening to you moan about it every day. Change the record. Oh shut up. No you shut up. I mean it, Bridget. If I hear you moaning about it one more time, I will tell mum on you. Now girls, let's just calm ourselves down. There's no need for you all this drama over the bad weather. It was Amy, mum. She was moaning, and... Mum, don't believe a single word of that. It's a total lie. I heard Bridget moaning about the weather again, and... Thank you, Amy. Off you go, back to what you were doing. I'll sort your naughty sister you out. As for you, Bridget, how dare you moan about the weather and try to put the blame on Amy. That's very naughty. But... No books, Bridget. I have to ground you for the way you've behaved. This shall last until I see a change in both your attitude and your behavior. Get upstairs and change into your nightclothes because you're going to bed. Naughty girl. I'm still a bit nervous, cat dear. I have the same worries as you. Bridget is very aggressive towards new people. She might be jealous from the moment she lays eyes on you. What about your other daughter? Amy's an angel. She's very accepting of new people once she gets to know them. A little nervous when she first meets them. Still, my girls need a father figure. Since their dad left when they were very little, things have been very unsettling for them. Maybe Bridget's aggression towards new men coming into your lives comes from the resentment she feels towards her dad for leaving. I didn't think about that. She was only two when it happened. She's nine now. That makes Amy. Around ten or eleven? Amy's ten. She was only three when their dad left. She hates him for it, but she won't hate you. Hey, Mum. We're here now. Who's this? Amy. Bridget. This is Hugo Vincent. My new boyfriend. Great. Another total dickhead waste of space. He'll just split up with you at some point. Not the welcome I was expecting. You're not welcome here. Get lost. Loser. Wait a minute, Bridget. We can't judge him that way without even knowing him. He makes mum happy, so therefore we should at least give him a chance. Thank you, Amy. We don't need a new man in our lives. You just wait. It'll be dad all over again. We don't know that. It might not. Amy. Bridget. I'm not your father, and nor do I know, or even want to know that sorry excuse for a human being. I assure you, I will not leave you, or your mum. Well, Hugo. I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. You sound like a genuine gentleman. If this works out, I'll gladly accept you as a father figure. Thank you, Amy. Your mum's right. You are an angel. Why don't I take you to the park, Amy? Hugo has something he wants to talk to Bridget about. That's an awesome idea, Mum. Bridget. A word if you please? Fine. Seeing as I don't have any choice. Oh, I think you'll see it differently after our little chat. Have a seat. Have I been naughty or something? No, sweetie. I'm a child psychologist, and I want to help you get to the bottom of this daddy issue. You can try, but I warn you. No child psychologist has been able to help me yet. And why do you suppose that is? Because I wouldn't let them. Okay, sweetie. I know this might be hard for you to believe, but I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to help you. Are you willing to let me help you? I'll give you a chance to try and help me. Okay then. Cast your mind back to when you were three. What was the last thing you remember? I remember suffering three years of paternal resentment. Your dad resented you? Why? Well, he always wanted a son. When Amy was born, he resented her for being born, and refused to do anything for her. What? And then, when I came out a year later, he absolutely hated my guts, and I suffered three years of both physical and verbal torment on his part. My mum was so furious with him that she divorced him, and he was arrested for child abuse. It serves him right. 
No parent should ever treat their children that way, even if they're not what they were hoping for. I feel much better for that. Thanks, Hugo. You're welcome. What you did by opening up to me about your traumatic past with your abusive father was very brave. You should be proud of yourself. I'm sorry about what I said before. I think we're going to get along just fine. No need for apologies. I understand how hard it must be for you and Amy to adapt to having a new man in your lives. I'm glad we could have this little chat. So am I. Could this day be any more perfect? I know what you mean, Amy. A little too perfect for a day in September. In case you girls have forgotten, autumn doesn't officially begin until the 21st of October. Or the 21st of October, according to a Lynn Hillebrandt. Lynn who? I think the girls are referring to a manager I once worked for, at the Rowan's Hospice Charity Shop in Harvard. I see. Thanks for clearing that up for me, James. No problem, Catherine. How are you and your family? We are fine, thank you. I'm pleased to see you're all doing fine too. This is just an observation, James, but you sound like our mum's new boyfriend, Hugo. Ah yes, Amy. Many of us in this neighborhood have the same voices. Well observed. It's been lovely seeing you again, James. You too, Catherine. All right, you two adorable little munchkins. It's time to get you home for lunch. Mum, are you in? Mum? No, Bridget. It's me here with you. Your mum has gone out. Hugo. This is something for mum to hear only. Now, Bridget. Whatever it is you have to tell your mum, you can tell me, and I can pass it on to her when she gets back. Come now, Bridget. Hugo's here in his capacity, as our stepdad. Surely you can trust him with any private information. He won't divulge it to anyone who isn't meant to know. Technically, he's not a stepdad, as he and mum aren't married yet. No, but I am your mum's boyfriend, and the closest thing you girls have to a father. I love you both as though you were my own. All right. It appears as though I was naughty earlier. Why? What did you do? I stole from the fridge. Bridget, this is your home. I don't mind you taking food from the fridge. And I'm sure your mum won't mind either. Actually, Hugo, unless it's breakfast, lunch or supper, we're not supposed to take food without asking. So what Bridget did was very naughty. Oh. I didn't know. So, what's my punishment? I'll just remind you to ask next time you want a snack. Mum grounds us for a week if she catches us taking without asking. No, I certainly do not. Bridget, I'm disappointed in you for fibbing to Hugo like that. How do you deal with it? So you know for next time, babes. I allow them to take one thing without asking. If they continue after that, I remind them they only to do it once. And if we ignore the reminder, we then get punished. I see. Thanks for clearing that up for me. Anytime. Bridget, you lied to me about how your mum deals with you two taking food without asking. That's naughty, and I'm very disappointed in you. I know. I'm sorry. That's okay. To ensure it doesn't happen again, I will remind you not to tell fibs because it's bad, and it can hurt a lot of people. Fair enough. But I think I need to be grounded. Don't be daft, Bridget. Lying isn't that big of a deal. Grounding you for it would be too extreme. Amy. Bridget. Can you join us in here please? Whatever it is. We didn't do it. Oh. You're not in trouble. Your mum and I have something important to tell you. Go ahead. We are all ears. Girls, in nine months time, you're going to be big sisters. Mum, are you pregnant? Yes I am, and we think it's going to be a boy. We don't care if it's a boy or a girl. All we want is a healthy baby. This is awesome news. Congratulations. A little brother or sister will soon be born into our family. This is so exciting. Girls, being big sisters is a big responsibility. 
It'll be up to you to set examples for the baby to follow. Having been Bridget's big sister for nine years, I know a thing or two about the responsibilities of being one. I can help her prepare to be one herself. That would be excellent, Amy. This will be her first younger sibling after your... And my second younger sibling. Don't worry, Bridget. With me guiding you, you'll be a great big sister when the baby is born. I can't believe those nasty boys. Calling the new baby Mum and Hugo are having a bastard, just because Mum and Hugo are unmarried. I hate them for that. I thought something like this might happen. Bridget, sit down please. We need to talk. What's this about? That's what I should be asking you. What's all this about? These boys outside today. Called our soon-to-be baby brother or sister a bastard due to Mum and Hugo not being married yet. Oh. I see. That word has come a long way since its original usage. It did traditionally mean a child born out of wedlock, but nowadays it's used as an insult. That makes it a swear word now, right? That's correct. But then, they only got to you because you reacted to their taunts. Next time, take no notice and they'll get bored of taunting you. Thanks, Amy. I love you. I love you too, Bridget. And you're welcome. Look, there's the bastard baby's sister-to-be. How does it feel to be having a bastard for a brother or sister? Come on. At least offer some form of retort. Bastard baby, bastard baby, baby. Nah, 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 nah. That is more than enough. You naughty boys have had your fun. Now leave this poor girl alone. But she's going to be a bastard sister. Did you not hear me? I have said. That's more than enough. So scram. Now. Bridget Sanders is off limits. She's no fun anyway. She won't even respond to us. I'll be talking to your parents about this. Bridget, sweetie. Are you okay? I'm fine thanks, Nikita. I was just ignoring those bullies, as advised by Amy. And very well done for taking her advice. You should be proud of yourself. Thanks, Nikita. Anytime, sweetie. Come on, I'll walk you home. Amy. Come into the kitchen, please. I'll be there in a minute. I'd like you to come now, please. This is very important. Don't you be naughty. I said I'd be there in a minute. Keep your hair on for goodness sake. You are grounded for two weeks. How dare you speak to me like that? I am your mother, and you do not ever speak to me in such a disrespectful way. That was very naughty of you to even think about it. In the kitchen, right now. Naughty girl. Wipe that look off your face. Now. Tut, tut, tut. Naughty Amy. Amy is being very naughty today, and is this close to being put to bed. I just wanted to finish. That's enough. I asked you to come in here so I could talk to you and Bridget together, and you refused, and then spoke to me like rubbish. Maybe you should postpone this chat until we're both ready to hear it. If Amy's being naughty, then she needs to be punished. Very well. Amy, go to your room and get ready for bed. I'll be up in a minute to tuck you in. Why? Because you, Missy, are going to bed. Naughty girls who act like little brats get treated like them. So it's bedtime for you. Now. What a disappointment. Thank you both for giving up a moment or so of your time. Don't mention it. Whatever it is, it must be important. So what is it? Well, the baby's due any time now. And Hugo and I want the sisters to choose the names. Let's see now. You have two daughters whose names begin with A and B. The next letter is C. How about Clyde if it's a boy? And Chloe if it's a girl? Clyde and Chloe? What excellent choices. I'm Hugo will think so too. I'll let him know tonight. We can't wait to meet our new baby brother or sister. Although. Bridget, it won't all be fun and games, remember? Being a big sister is a big responsibility. Don't be forgetting what I taught you. I don't think you have anything to worry about there, my darling. 
Bridget doesn't forget things that quickly. She's not a goldfish. I know she's not a goldfish. It'd be funny if she was. Well, thanks a lot, Amy. Hugh is an awesome fella, but he does seem a bit old. Bridget, how old do you think I am? I don't know. At least a hundred years old. Oh, you cheeky what's it? A hundred years old indeed? No. I assure you I'm not a hundred years old. I'm not even fifty yet. All right then. You must be around forty. Close, but still not there. I'm not forty yet either. Cheeky madam. Are you even in your thirties yet? I am in my thirties. I'm two years younger than your mum. She's thirty-three now. You can't be only thirty-one. Honestly. Actually, I'm nearly thirty-two. Mum's nearly thirty-four you know. Amy's nearly eleven, and I'm nearly ten. I know. And no need to apologize. I know you were just having fun with me. And don't go making up naughty stories that I'd punish you for it. You know I wouldn't. So we found out we have a little sister on the way. It's exciting. Baby Chloe's on the way, and she's going to love her family. That's right, my beautiful daughters. But there's still some preparation work to do before I give birth to little Chloe. What sort of preparation? Well, it's maternity preparation. Of course, Mum. We'll help you every step of the way. Thank you, girls. Now I have help from everyone. Hugo's got the most important job as the father. We'd expect that, of course. Is he looking forward to having a daughter? Very much so. He comes from a family of brothers and has always wanted a daughter of his own. He told me so that first time I met him. Well there you are then. His day is made. Plus he has two stepdaughters to love as his own. And he does. He loves you both to pieces, but as your mother, I'm your primary carer. Chloe Bethany Sanders Grayson. Welcome to the world. You so cute. The most beautiful baby in the world. Of course she is. She gets her beauty from mum's side. Look who she also has for two older sisters. Oh you two, stop it. Being naughty with your flattery. So sweet. You two need to set fine examples for little Chloe to follow. And we will, Hugo. You and mum can count on us to do our share. This means that from now on, there will be no more first name basis between either of you and Hugo. You are to address him as dad. We don't want Chloe to grow up thinking it's okay to call her parents by their first names. We understand, dad. It's time we regarded you as our male parental unit now anyhow. Absolutely, dad. Enough time has passed. Chloe, these are your big sisters, Amy and Bridget. They love you very much. That we do, and no mistake. We adore you, baby sister. Wait a minute, Amy. Let's not crowd the poor little dear. She'll get scared. You're right, Bridget. It was a good idea to come to the park, Amy. Chloe needs her sleep. She's a baby, remember? Babies need round-the-clock care and attention. That's why we're out here. We can be as noisy as we want here. Of course she does. How silly of me. Let's get some serious playing done. Hello, Amy and Bridget. Hello, Lana. How are you little lovelies today? We're very well thanks, Lana. How are you? I too, am very well thanks but very busy with my two sweet little babies. And how are little Poppy and Sebastian today? Oh they are really well thank you. Now, I heard your mom and her boyfriend recently had your baby sister. They certainly did. Her name's Chloe. And a very cute baby she is too. She's having her midday nap right now, so we came here so as not to disturb her. First off, I want to congratulate you on becoming big sisters. And second, little Chloe is very lucky to have two big sisters who love her to pieces. Thanks, Lana. Very much appreciated. I best get these two home, 
as they need their nappies changing, and then their afternoon nap. Okay, now to start having fun. This is fun. Huh? Bridget, this is a serious responsibility we've been tasked with. Caring for Chloe is the most important thing here, I know. Mum and Dad are trusting us to do this, as a test to see their you see. I think it's time to change this little one's bottom. I'll be right back. How did she know that? There you go, Chloe. All better. Time for your afternoon nap now, I reckon. Come on. There you go, precious. Sleep tight. I love you. Amy. What's taking so long? I changed Chloe, and now it's time for her nap, so I'm putting her to bed. Silence please. And a marvelous job you've done. Well done. Let's leave her to sleep. Come on, you two. I better get to class before. And what time do you call this, Bridget Sanders? I call it a quarter past ten. Exactly. And would you mind telling me why you're over one hour late for class? I was in the toilet. For 75 minutes. What a pathetic excuse. It does not take an hour and a quarter to use the toilet. You've got detention. Detention? Yes, for a week. During what would be your break times. Naughty girl. Get to my classroom, right now. That's not fair, sir. I'll tell you what's not fair, young lady. It's not fair that you'd turn up over 70 minutes late for my class with a pathetic excuse. The worst I've ever heard, and whine about your punishment. You'll serve your detentions, as given to you. Any more whining, and it'll be nappies on. Class. Now. Some nerve she's got. Say, Amy. Yes, Bridget? Haven't you ever wondered what it might be like if we were boys? Honestly, no I haven't. And nor do I want to. Well, I do. Why on earth would you be wondering what it would be like if we were girls? It just seems interesting, doesn't it? Not really. You're being dumb. Why are you saying that? It sounds like you wish we were girls. Be happy for who you are. Oh, come on. Just try and imagine it for one minute. No thank you, Bridge. That's not necessary. Not only that, but it's inappropriate behavior, and... I'll be telling Mum and Dad when we get back. You're being ridiculous in a very naughty way. Don't be like that, Amy. Little Miss Cynical. Cynical? Oh how dare you even think about calling me that. You are one very naughty girl. Oh you are two very naughty girls. How dare you cause a scene in public like this? But, Uncle Marnie. No arguments. Amy, you two are being very naughty indeed, causing such a scene in a public park. A very poor example to set for Chloe, acting like babies. So, come with me, and I will put nappies on the pair of you. Now. I'm supposed to set good examples for Chloe to follow, but she'll just do this anyway. Now Bridget, that's not the right attitude to take. You're naughty you are. Chloe will copy anything we do around her. Get down from there. Poor example. Amy. No arguments, Bridget. Get your bottom down now, or I tell on you. Bridget Sanders you naughty girl. Get down and go to your room. How dare you let me catch you standing on the sofa. You're grounded. Grounded for what? You are grounded for standing on the sofa. That's very naughty, and a really unfortunate example to set for Chloe. Chloe's a baby. And your little sister. How dare you behave this way? Off to your room. Now. Any more naughtiness and you can go to bed. Most unfortunate. Amy, don't you start being naughty too. I'm bored. That's why I'm up here. That doesn't mean you can stand on the furniture, Amy. Come on, get down and behave yourself. But I'm bored. I can't. 
Oh, I see. You're being naughty, aren't you? Naughty? Not at all. I beg your pardon. You are being a very naughty girl. You know you're not allowed to stand on the furniture. Get down from there, right now. I don't want to. Fine. Then I'll get you down myself. Like the naughty little girl you are. Put me down then. Perhaps I need to put you to bed? Bed? But Auntie Mandy, it's only 10.35 in the morning. Why would I need to go to bed this early? Because you're being naughty, that's why. And don't try to deny it. No, I'm not. Excuse me, Missy, but you are being very naughty, and that is no way to teach Chloe to behave. I'm not being naughty, though. All right. If you won't behave yourself, then you are going to bed. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Not only that, you are grounded for two weeks. This behavior is totally unacceptable for an 11 year old. Oh, boohoo. Stop crying, you brats. I see only one brat in this house. You, Amy, are being such a little brat. And if you're going to act like a baby, then we have to treat you like one. Oh no. I'm not wearing nappies again. Excuse me, Amy. But you are acting like a baby, and if you're going to act like one, then we have to treat you like it. So it's nappies for you, until you change your behavior. So you need to come with me, and it's into a nappy for you. Here we are, still putting nappies on my two eldest daughters. Please. Mum, why is Amy wearing a nappy? Amy is wearing a nappy because she was acting like a baby. I think I need to put you in a nappy too. Mum, I'm not acting like a baby. I don't need a nappy thanks. You are about to start making fun of Amy for wearing a nappy, so you can join her. Come on, Bridget. Nappy for you. Now. Amy. Yes, Bridget? What shall we do today? I was just wondering the same thing, Bridget. What shall we do today indeed? You could go and play in the park. We could, if it wasn't closed due to flooding. You could visit the town fair. They packed that up and moved yesterday. I could use some extra help with Chloe. I'm sure she'd love her sisters to help out with her. That. Sounds like a good idea. Sure. Anything to kill our boredom. Excellent. I'm just about to get her up from her nap. If you'd like to assist me with that, I'd appreciate it. Of course. We'll be right up. Okay. I'll see you up there. Well, we'd best get upstairs and help Mum with Chloe. Indeed we best. I got away with coming home past my bedtime. No, you certainly haven't. Why were you lit back this time? And no excuses either. I was having so much fun, I lost track of time. That excuse didn't work on your grandmother when I was your age, and it certainly won't work on me. You're a very naughty girl. But mum... I don't want to hear any more excuses, Amy. You know your bedtime is at 21.30, and you have come back at 22.45. You are grounded for a week, and will be going to bed at 19.30 for the next two weeks. No arguments either. Now, get your naughty bottom up to bed. How dare you? What a very naughty daughter I've got. She's finally asleep. Now I can turn in for the night. Right though. So let's see. So we got sandwiches. Check. Crisps. Check. Biscuits. Check, check, and double check. Amy, we packed everything we need for our picnic. You didn't check nappies off your list. Mum, why would we want nappies for our picnic? You can't eat those. Sorry. I meant napkins. Mum. You're a right donut. Fancy getting them confused. They're two completely different things. I know. However, I think you both should have checked the weather forecast before arranging this. Why is that? 
because there's a rainstorm forecast for this afternoon. I'm sorry girls. Never mind. We can just have the picnic indoors. That's very grown up of you girls. However, it'll be between just you two, as Chloe is far too little for any of the food in your hamper. That's a shame. If she were old enough, she'd love the experience. Don't worry, Bridget. She won't be a baby forever. It only lasts a couple of years. Off you go and enjoy your picnic. Only eat what you can. Those girls are so very sweet. Hey Amy. What should we do today? We could help Mum with Chloe. You could if she was here, but she isn't. She's out with Hugo. So what can we do then? We could. You can wear nappies, both of you. That's funny, Mum. It sounded like you said we can wear nappies. That's because I did. You can both wear nappies today. Mum, we can't wear nappies. Yes you can, and you are both going to wear nappies today. But we're 9 and 10. Too old. Nonsense. You are both having nappies on, now. Somebody needs to talk Catherine out of this crazy way of thinking. She does need psychiatric help. Her poor daughters are 9 and 10 years old, and she treats them like babies? I know. I feel really sorry for them. Well, come on, Lana. Let's get on with our errands. Looks like I arrived right on time. It's good to have time to yourself sometimes. Amy, how about? Not today, Bridget. I want to be on my own. Oh come on, Amy. Being on your own is boring. Come and hang out. Bridget, I told you I want to be left alone. If you don't go away, right now, I'm going to get cross. Why? Because you're badgering me to play with you when I want to be left alone. I said no, and that means no. Bridget. If Amy wants to be left alone, then you should leave her alone. Go on, go and amuse yourself. Come on, Amy. You heard what I said. How dare you continue to pester Amy after being told nicely to leave her alone. I only want to play. Well, Amy wants to be left alone. And you are going to leave her alone this instant. But... That's it. How dare you pester your sister to play, when she told you nicely she wants to be left alone. That's very naughty, and it will not be tolerated. Get inside the house, and go straight to your room. You are grounded for a week. You are a very naughty girl. Bridget, this is no way to teach Chloe to behave. I'm sure I haven't a clue what you're talking about. You know damn well what I'm talking about. You are being very naughty, acting like a spoiled little brat. You are supposed to set examples for Chloe. Oh do shut up will you? I should ground you, but given the way you're behaving, you deserve the punishment more fitting for your behavior. The punishment more fitting for my behavior? That's right. If you insist on acting like a baby, then you are going to be treated like one. It'll be nappies for you, until you start acting like a big girl. No way. Yes way. So, let's not waste any more time arguing about this. It's time to come upstairs and change your bottom. That is to say, it's time to put your nappy on. Now. Very bad Bridget. 